say God is good. Can you look at somebody and tell the person, God bless you. And keep you. And make his face shine upon you. Upon your life and your family. Your children. And their children. And their children. And their children. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is here to bless us one more time. And I know that anytime we come before the presence of God, there is a miracle, there is a puzzle, there is, there is a glory, there is a favor to be found in the presence of God. And as we pray, as we fast, as we seek his face, the Lord make himself known to us. Hallelujah. And we will look at something from the scriptures and we stand upon it and continue to pray. Amen. Oh, I can hear you, church. I say amen. 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 Don't forget, we are doing the chapel together. You are in your father's house. Amen. You are not in your bedroom. You are in your father's house. Maybe you are hearing my voice. You are you are sitting in your in your bedroom or in your sitting room. No, no, you are still in your father's house. Amen. The Bible says, wherever two or three have gathered in his presence, he is there. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we want to thank the Lord for this amazing encounter. We want to thank him for his grace. We want to thank him for his faithfulness in our lives. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. The Lord has been always good. The Lord has been always kind to us. Can I get a witness? Because if the Lord, if it's not by the favor and the mercy of God, we would have been destroyed by now. You know, some of you think that you are you are making it because you are smart and you are you know how to do your thing and you have all your contacts and your friends. But ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I'm sorry to to tell you that it is the mercy of God that has brought you this far. <laughs> it's not anything that you have done. Amen. It is it is sheer by grace. Look at somebody and say by grace. Grace. Hallelujah. Is the grace of God, is the grace of God, is the grace of God. David said, the Lord is my strength. Amen. I don't know about you, but my strength is in the Lord. My strength comes from Him. My favor comes from Him. My ways, my victory, my increase come from the Lord. Amen. Mm-hmm. Because if the Lord increase you, no one can bring you down. Remember the last time I said that whoever gives you your promotion have the power to take it off. If the world gives you the promotion, the world can take it away from you. And there is nothing you can do about it. If your promotion comes from man, then the demise of your life will also come from man. If a man gives you something, then man have the power to take away from you. So today, I want us to look at something in the scripture, trusting God for his mercy. Amen. Amen. Psalm 31. Psalm 31. Can I get a witness? Psalm 31. Hallelujah. You see, God is good. Somebody asked me, what is the most powerful verse in the scripture? And for some, for some time, I started scratching my head. Hallelujah. So if you had to pick one verse from the scripture, what would it be? And I started scratching my head, scratching my head and scratching my head. I said, what? How come to pick only one verse in the scripture? 
Ladies and gentlemen, today I ask you a question. If you have to pick one verse or the scripture, what would it be? Hmm? Repent. I hear you. Repent. Amen. One verse in the yeah. scripture. Can I hear your, your verse in the scripture? Those online, those who are here. One verse in the scripture. If you had to pick only one verse in the scripture. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's powerful. Pep, we didn't hear your verse. I said, all oh, is powerful. All is powerful. I hear someone say, all is powerful. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can we, Mrs. King, what's your powerful, what's your verse in the, what? Hallelujah. <laughs> And I sat down, I started praying, I said, how do you pick one verse in the scripture? Amen. And I could not answer the question. I could not answer. And as I sat down, started praying, and asking the Spirit of God, I said, Lord Jesus, guide me. Because there is a foundation. You see, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that there is always, before everything starts, there is always what? A foundation, a purpose. You see, it is more easier for us to see the end product, but difficult to see the foundation. If you walk past your house and you saw a tree there, it is easier for you to point to a tree. But that tree was a seed. Chances are you have stood and trashed more trees in your life than the trees that you have seen. Wash you 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 walk over them you smash them you cut them you pull them you break them but what you've forgotten is that if you had allowed the very stem the very root the very tiny tiny weeny weeny tree that thing that seed to sprout that would have been that bigger tree that you were saying that means that it is not about the tree But it's about the seed. Oh, church, I can't hear you. So Jesus said, if you have faith, like what? A mustard seed, not a mustard what? A mustard seed. <laughs> Amen. Not the tree, but what? The seed. Because everything is the foundation that makes the thing. Amen. You see, you are where you come from. I can't hear you. Your life experience, your challenges, your battles that you have fought in your life, as time goes on, that battle begins to make you. It begins to shape your thinking it begin to shape your ways. It begin to shape everything that you do. Even though you do not specifically sit in the classroom and tell yourself that I'm shaping myself that way, but that life of yours begin to shape you. Because you are the product of what you have been through. You are the product of what you have. Your experience are the product of you. This is why when you come to Jesus, your life begins to change to be like who? 
I can't hear you. Like who? Like Jesus. That means that exterior stuff that we see is not who you are. It's where you come from. So I was praying. I said, Lord, if I had to pick one, what is it? Go with me to the book of Romans. You put your hands there in Psalms. Put your hands there. Go, go do octopus quickly. Yes. Because we need to walk with the scripture. And when it comes to time to break and tear and uproot and destroy, we are standing upon the word of God. Hallelujah. Can I hear amen? amen. The book of Romans chapter number one. Guys, are you hearing me? The book of Romans chapter number one. Chapter number five. Can I hear amen? Amen. And as I was praying, the Spirit of God directed me to this place and said, this verse is the whole picture of everything. It's the foundation, it is the present, and it's the future. Romans chapter number 5, verse number 8. But God commanded his love towards who? In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is the beginning and the what? And the end. This is the journey of everything. That verse put the whole Bible like this. Psh. The journey that you take, where you come from, also shapes you. He said, Wow. We were all yet sinners. But Christ died for us. That was the love of who? Of God. That God did not allow us to be destroyed. He did not allow us to be broken apart. That our sins, we still found favor in his eyes. Because of his love. That even though we are still sinners, we walk in sin, he made sure that he, his son, Jesus Christ, was available, not yesterday, not today, not tomorrow, but every single time and every single second for the purpose of his glory because he loves us. If you look at the Bible, say, why we were yet what? Sinners. Christ died for us. When the Spirit of God took me to this verse, I said, Wow. 
Because this must make sense to you. In your prayer, sometimes you say that, God, I'm praying. Then you fast and you pray. Then you fast and you pray. Then you fast. You say, God, you are not doing anything. No, God is doing something. Because if God, the love of God was so great enough for him to give his son to die, then it means that God is even doing more than you have asked him to do. He's doing beyond his pay grade, if I should say. Because, oh God, uh, 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 can I have a new new BMW, a new car? car? God, God, you, you know this job, uh, can I have a pay rise? Huh? God, you know I want a pay rise. God, that, that shoe, you see, they, they are selling a new iPhone. I've got an iPhone 14, but I want the 15 one. God, you know, this woman that I'm married to, she's a troublemaker. She causes trouble to me every single time. You see, God, my man, my man, he's a lazy man. He doesn't do anything. He's like this. He's causing, he can't stop drinking. He's causing all this trouble. But you've forgotten about the love of God that is keeping you. Sometimes you assume that you made it yourself. You, 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 for some reason, you were smart enough and you mended your way and you manipulated your way and you built up your own way and you, you made it yourself. Therefore, you are asking God, God, can you help me to make it? Then you say, God, this place, you know, I came here myself, but now I have reached a point I need you to make. You forgot that every single step that you have taken, it was by the love of God manifesting through Christ in your life. But God, look at this, the word that comes after that. God did what? Commended. It is a love. The word commend means show off. Okay? Somebody showing off. Showing. Not only just doing, but doing what? Sh put, not, not only saying, but putting his money where his mouth is. We've had so many Christians, they say X and it's Y. They say Y is W. You tell to Jesus, I love you, but eh, no, no, no. no. The Bible says God demonstrated his love towards us. Now what you, what, what, what you didn't see over there is that God did not ask you for, his, for you to do something for him to show you, he, you his love. He, he gave it without asking you for anything. He gave it to you and did not come to you and say, Hey, brother Daniel, Daniel, get up. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do this. Then maybe I will show you my love. You know, this is how the women do. They come around, they see that you got a sports car, they love you. They see that you don't have no sports car, they tell you, eh, 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 eh. I'll give it a pass. Amen. But the Bible says God gave his love. He gave it. We did not ask for it. He gave because love is what? A gift. Amen. He gave it because that love was what? A gift. And he gave it towards us. That means that whatever we have done, our faults, our way, God overlooked that. It was a love that you don't have to pay for. So I love you no matter what, 
No matter who you are, I just love you. I can't help it. I love you. The Bible says, even one we were still sinners. Jesus Christ died for us. I can't hear you, church. Now, the problem here is that maybe some of you do not understand. When we talk about the God's goodness, we're talking about God's blessing, we're talking about God's grace, we're talking about God's favor. God, mercy was demonstrated. Even when we were sinners, when we were not worthy of it. Now, maybe I don't know where you are, what is going on in your mind. But as we're going to pray, I want you to begin to think about this. Now, God says that I will be your strength. God says that I will what? Honor my word in you. God says that my love for you is greater than everything that you are fighting for. God says that my love is able to heal you. My love is able to build you. My love is able to deliver you. My love is able to provide for you. My love is able to rekindle my grace in you. My love is able to revive you. My love is able to cause your weaknesses to be strength. My love is sufficient for you you see David saw this David saw most of you the life that David had to go through, you still will not understand his life. Sometimes when you read the Bible, you look at Psalms and you look at David's encounter, you might think that he, he's, he's a crazy man. But if you look at the Bible, well, you see that David was a very emotional man. And when it comes to the things of God, his heart was, was, was glued to God. And David life ex experience is what shaped his life what he had to go through the things that he that he have to he have to endure is what built him you see some of you you are crying you say that god nothing is working no god is building you amen god is preparing you God will not just get up and say, oh, you want to be the manager of the company? Come on, go and do. No, sometimes God has to make you fail and fail and fail and fail so that you understand the meaning of failure and the meaning of success before he gives you the right thing that you need. You see, a lot of people do not understand the word uh, when you read Psalm 23, that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want an extra. Most people do not understand. He said, thou preparest a table where? Huh? In front of me, before my enemies. He prepare a table. You see that he did not say you give a table. But you prepare. Amen. Because preparation is time. Before it comes in your, before your enemies, the cookers have to cook the food. I didn't hear you. All right? The guys who are making the donuts, you know, is going like that and scooping and scooping and turning. Because the donuts must be made. The cup bearer had to clean the cups. The table must be set. It is a process.
Some of you just want to come and everything is fast food and fast done and God, you're wasting time. No, he prepares a table. Yeah. He put them there. Prepares. And that process can take time. Are you hearing me? That can take time. That can take time. But you have to wait for him. You have to trust him. You have to believe him. You have to know that he's faithful. So sometimes you don't see the main dish, but you see the appetizers coming. You, you wait for it. Amen. I say sometimes you don't see the whole thing. Maybe the cup bearer will bring a glass of water on the table. You wait for it. Because God is walking with you in the process. In the process. In the process and that preparation as you are seeing the cup coming as you see the bowl coming as you see the towels coming those things god is setting those things up as your enemies watch in awe they will watch and they are surprised they tell themselves what is this oh that is nothing it's just a cup of water then they look around they look oh what is this oh it's just a grapes it's appetizer there is nothing before they are aware they see that they, someone is carrying the whole piece of roasted pig or a whole piece of roasted lamb and it's coming fully barbecued minted and it's coming and people are carrying it and bringing it in front of you and your enemies will look at that and they will be confounded because God is the one who is doing so, not man. Mm. The preparation. So David understood that. He understood that as long as God is on his side and the love of God for him is greater than all things, he became patient to wait for the Lord. So David says something that I want us to look at is Psalm 35. Psalm 35. Can I hear God is good? Psalm 35, church. Amen. Psalm 35, are you there? Verse 9 going. Psalm 35, verse 9. Those online, Psalm 35, verse 9. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Psalm 35 verse 9. David said, And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. He shall rejoice in his what? Now go back. To, put your hands there. And as you read Romans chapter, eight, uh, chapter 5 verse 8. What is there? But God commended his love towards us in that while we were what? Christ. What did Christ give us? Salvation. The love of God comes with what? Salvation. So David understood it. So because he understood it, he said, now I will rejoice in who? In the Lord, because the Lord is my salvation. Instead of just coming to God and say, God, I want this, God, I want this, God, I want this. That is for 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 lazy people. 
you come to God and you rejoice in him because he knows what you need. He knows where to plug you. He knows how to move you. He knows how to feed you. You don't come and say, God, I want something. You come and say, God, I rejoice in you because you are my salvation. Your promises say you will take care of me. You will walk with me. You will deliver me. You will guide me. You will bless me. And I know that you are able to do all these things. So I'm not here to bore you. I am here to rejoice in you. I'm here for your glory. Can I get a witness? I say I am here for your glory, Lord. Don't, don't come to God with, your, with, with those demands. Enough of those things. David said, All my bones shall say, Who is like unto thee? Do you got bones inside you? David said, All my bones. Look at somebody and say, All my bones. All my bones. My bones. My bones. Will say, Who is like unto thee? Ladies and gentlemen, we are the evidence of the goodness of God. We are the evidence of the power of God in action. It's about time we change the game. Look at somebody and say, We change the game. Instead of worrying about the trouble, we rejoice like David. Instead of worrying about things that trying to that makes us go crazy and mad, we tell our bones to rejoice in the Lord. Because there is no one like the God that we have. The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is none like unto him. My bones rejoice in him. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. You see the statement. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Now let me take you there and just point a revelation with you quickly. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But God commended his love towards us. If you look at this statement, see that it's a past tense. It's something that God has already done. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Died is also past. That means that before all these things, God did not ask you to pay Or to put a deposit down for something. In fact, he was not even expecting anything from you. He said, I am giving this to you. I'm giving it to you because my love. My love is greater. Amen. Mm -hmm. So while we were yet sinners, he died. David says, my bones, all my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee? Which delivereth the poor from him, that is too strong for him. Yea, the poor and the needy from him, that spoileth him. He said, false witnesses did rise up. They laid... To my charge these things that I knew not. Amen. Everything that scares you has been a false witness. Please, 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 please. <coughs> Amen. 
I want you to take care of the kids. Don't let them come and disturb. Put them in their place. Amen. He says, false witness did rise up. They lay up, they laid to my charge things that I knew not. As David enjoyed himself in the hands in the presence of God, they came false witness. Everything that we are fighting, things that we see in our lives, has always been false witness. The doctor told you that you will die because you got cancer. So maybe you got three months to live, one year to live. That is a false witness. Can I hear amen? amen. They told you amen. that no matter whatever is going on in your life, there is nothing that they can do for you. Everything is broken for you. And you better begin to live with that new normal. That is a false witness. Because what people say is not what God says. And every word that comes from man is false. Somebody said, how can you say that? Because man does not understand the beginning and the end. Man only understand what they have seen with their eyes. But the last time we checked that the eye is even deceptive. Because if you bring four people to look at the same thing, they will tell you different colors, different things. Or if you say one thing to somebody and you tell them to t sell, say it around and do a Chinese whisper, by the time it got to the four feet person, the word that you said is already changed. We have a false sense of understanding. So he says, false witnesses. They came. They whispered. They made the charge against me. I don't know what is what charge has been made against you. I don't know what, what charge is standing before you. What I know is that as long as you rejoice in the Lord and you allow your bones to praise the Lord and you look out to God and say, by your grace and your favor and your love, even in my sickness, even in my weakness, even in my sin, my sinful life, you gave your son to die on the cross for me. If you, God, you are able to do that even for me, an imbecile, a sinner, a broken man like me. I know that you are able to do all things if I ask you. I know that you are able to do that. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Bible now. Hallelujah. Verse number 17. He said, Lord, how long will thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destruction. And my darling, from the lions, I will give thee thanks in the great congregation, and I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yeah, they open their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eyes 
have seen it. That is what they say. But that is not what God says. God says that I love you. And I gave, I've given my son for you. And God says, as long as you praise him, you let your bones and everything praise him, then he will take care of your affairs. Can we stand and pray, please? You are faithful, Lord Jesus. You are faithful, Lord Jesus. You are faithful. Thank you for your glory. 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 Thank you for your power. Thank you for your victory, O oh Lord Jesus. For you are worthy, O oh Lord Jesus. You are worthy, O oh Lord Jesus. You are worthy, O oh Lord Jesus. I bless your name, Lord. Kamara Basha Kurama Santerim Rima Bora Taya. Ikantara Baboro Bosa 